I've always been fascinated by uh, the thought process and the backstory of people who have done remarkable things. Uh, Yoni obviously led a mission that was probably one of the greatest raids in history. Um, and we had access, and I had read when I was younger, his book of letters. Um, and you see a lot of them here in the film. And that, to me, was a reason to tell this story because it's very rare that you get such an insight and, and you see the conflicts and the heart and the soul and the, uh, the, the turmoil that went on and, and raged inside of him while he was making these choices and making the, the, uh, the dedication uh, to his country paramount in his life. And Yoni is a very inspiring character to me. He, um, he's a person who probably should have been very self-absorbed. Uh, he was a remarkable athlete. A lot of people don't know that in, um, in Philadelphia, he was actually the star athlete with Reggie Jackson. The two of them were the star athletes in their class. Um, he was a brilliant academic, um, breezed through Harvard. Uh, he was obviously a very good looking guy as well. Um, and he had every reason to be selfish. And I think the remarkable aspect about him was that he was constantly putting, pushing aside those selfish drives and, and seeking a higher purpose and serving a higher purpose and coming to the defense of his country. And I think in any, any country, I think it's remarkable that a person does that. And uh, I feel like with the letters, you really get an insight into the conflicts and the trade-offs and the sacrifices that these types of people go through. Um, and it was just a remarkable opportunity to tell this, uh, this great story. But you know, we wanted to tell this story as a very personal story. We wanted it not to be a political story. We wanted it to be a story of a young man sacrificing himself for a higher cause and the conflicts and, and trade-offs that, that came along with that. And for us to be able to get the funding uh, it, through somebody who didn't have connections with uh, the family politically um, and somebody who would be able to really let us capture this story. Uh, I was, I, the person who financed the film um, and helped finance the film took the lead uh, is Mark Manson. Um, he's a former Wall Street person and he's a remarkable man who I was financing. We, we have a feature film fund in England together and I was sitting with him in a restaurant and um, he just asked me what other projects I was interested in making. and. Um, I told him about the story. He had no connection to the story. He had no real interest. I never had heard of Yoni Netanyahu before. Um, and I talked to him about it and, and I explained to him my thoughts and he fell in love with the story. He saw it as a love triangle between a young man, his family and the loves of his life and his country. And when he figured that out and he understood that, I really thought this is the person who we should make the film with because that's the kind of film we wanted to make. The other amazing thing was, and it was a surprise, because as most people know, when you go into documentaries and you don't know exactly what you're gonna get out of the interviews, and the interviews are the bedrock of the film. So we were telling a story that was 35 years old, and we had no idea if the, when we got on the ground and talked to the soldiers who were there, or the family, or his wife and girlfriends, if they were going to be able to relive in an emotional way, in a compelling way, this story, you know, his life. And it was very nerve-wracking when we got there. And I think after a few of the interviews, especially with uh, the Prime Minister and Tutti and Bruria, who wears all of her emotions on her sleeve, um, we really felt like we had something. Because again, as a testament to Yoni, these people think about him, feel him every single day. Well, I have, uh, I have four kids. Um, my oldest son is actually named after Yoni. Uh, he's 14 years old. and. Um, as I said before, you know, they're living in a culture of me. You know, they're living in a culture of what can I do for my success and, and my career and, you know, just every day, how can I make myself happy? Um, and hopefully here's a role model who shows them that there is a, there is a greater purpose in life, whether it's for your country, whether it's for your community, you know, whether it's, it's for, you know, African uh, children, whatever the cause might be, hopefully this at least opens their eyes um, and I think Americans in general opens their eyes to seeing the world outside of them and not just being uh, 